Well, we're about to figure out why we are not manifesting the things that we want. What is getting in the way? I have Archangel Zadkiel in here and Archangel Shamuel. Hello, everybody. I'm Michelle. This is Angel Souls. I'm an angel medium, and I'm going to be bringing in some messages to answer that question, and I will bring forward any other messages that need to come forward. Now, after watching this video, if you like what you see and you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, you have a few options. You can get an angelic messaging reading in my standard readings, which is booked on my website, angelsouls444.com. Please read the terms there, okay? And then you can work with me live one-on-one, -on -one, or you can get a live course. Currently, I can go in-depth with helping you work with any archangel. That would be a one-hour session. Uh, we can do the Connect With Your Angels session, which is one hour. Or I have the Angel Mediumship course where I am teaching actual angel mediumship one-on-one -on -one, completely tailored to you. So those are four one-hour sessions. You can pay for those individually, get them as a package. If you're interested in that, email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. Let me know your availability and we'll go from there. Okay, so there is all that. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, supporting. I love you all. I love you so much. Now, as we get into this message, there's something else that I want to address here. The past few videos that I've put up, they have gotten some reach. So they are reaching out to different types of people now. Uh, the algorithm has picked it up a little bit, which is fine because it's been in a lull for the longest. But when that happens, the trolls come out. Okay, so I don't want any of you thinking oh no, Michelle, like what must she be feeling right now? It's actually weirdly for me a sign that the videos are getting out to people. I know that's so bizarre, but uh, yeah. And uh, it's been an interesting sort of observation of human nature and, you know, people scolding because I didn't do something that they thought I should do. Fascinating. But anyway, you don't need to worry about me. I'm good. I've been doing this for 10 years. A troll is nothing. Okay. So don't worry yourself about that. I don't want you getting some sort of, you know, negative energy or feeling pity or anything like that. That's low frequency. We don't need that. Okay. We want you to be happy. We want you to bring in abundance and prosperity and love, harmony, grace, all the good stuff. All right. So let me, I already got some of the message here and it's changing how we one show up in this world. There's a big shift happening around that. Obviously, we're coming up on 2024. So someone had left a really good comment asking, how do we get prepared for 2024? And my answer to that is, if you have to ask that, it's already too late for you. I'm kidding. It's not too late. <laughs> no, but <laughs> rely on every... <laughs> Did I scare anybody? I'm sorry. I mean, I was just trying to make a joke. But <laughs> you just lean on all the stuff that you have learned so far. If you have a good heart and you're just trying to be the best human being you could possibly be, and that's really a lot of, of what Archangel Shamuel teaches us to do. As long as you're doing that, you're going to be okay. All right. So there is that. Uh, so a shift in how we approach things, taking it out of the ego consciousness per usual, right? They're, they're just laying the foundation here. So Zadkiel comes forward and says, let's clean this up. So if you don't know who Zadkiel is, that's Z-A-D-K-I-E-L. He's largely associated with transmutation. Okay. So because of that, he is also associated with the violet flame, cleaning up your energy field, helping you get a different perspective, seeing the other person's side of things without making excuses for bad behavior. Zadkiel helps us harmonize, right, by not hanging on to a storyline. So if you have a story of something that's happened to you, and I'm right there with you guys, everything that I pass along to you, I'm human. I, I'm in it too. Okay. I'm learning right alongside of you. And a um, little side note, if you have an angel medium, tarot reader, astrologer, or anybody who acts like because they do spiritual work and they're a spiritual practitioner, they're above it all, walk away, walk away. And those people are going to be falling from grace very, very soon because 
you can't lie, okay? You can't you can't show up and pretend like you got it all together when you don't, okay? Now, I'm real honest with you guys. You Many of you have commented on this black background. <laughs> Very concerned that it's black. I don't know why. If I were to knock this down, you would see that there's a bunch of books back there and um, boxes because I moved going on two months ago here, about six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. And it's still not done. So mind your business. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Just give, don't pressure me. Back to the message. Okay, so <laughs> Sadkiel is talking about cleaning up these stories that we tell ourselves, right? And a lot of times this is a victim story. Now, when we do that, different people approach that in different ways. Sometimes people victimize themselves to get attention. Sometimes people are in the victim state of mind because they have not worked through it. They have not healed. Okay. And so it is very difficult to forgive um, when you're in the space of still trying to process what has occurred. Of course, I always say get proper support. And if that is for you getting a therapist, if you get a good therapist and you're doing your good spiritual practice, Remember, you are a multi-layered being. Is it, can I say that? Is that weird? <laughs> you got levels. Okay. So we need the appropriate help for various parts of you. Okay. So what Zadkiel is teaching us and bringing through the Violet Flame. If you ever heard of the Violet Flame meditation, this is also associated with St. Germain energy. This is essentially, in my mind, the way I practice it is just doing a visualization. This could be very powerful, right? Uh, it kind of affects your emotions and then it affects your energy field. But you imagine a violet flame burning up everything that doesn't serve you, letting it evaporate. If you don't like the flame idea, you can always just imagine a violet light around you and pain, any sense of being stuck. Remember we said we were going to look at why we're not manifesting. Here we go. Anywhere we're stuck, anything that is still hanging in there, and it could be generational as well. Anything of that sort starts to evaporate or dissipate into this light and you are restored. Now the transmuting part of it is if you have a story, let's be very practical here. If you have a story that you always tell yourself, in the past, this happened, it was that person or situation or whatever, and I was hurt and I still can't believe that I was hurt. Okay. Now, as I go into this, I'm not talking about deep, deep trauma here. I'm not talking about that. You need a, a trauma specialist to help you with that along with your spiritual practice. But I'm talking about something that just, oh, like just someone got under your skin and you never got to have your say or whatever, allowing this energy to go, uh, or that story to kind of dissipate into this violet light or the violet flame and allowing yourself to be restored. Guess what's going to happen? Perspective that's transmuting it. It's taking something that is lower in nature, lower in frequency and allowing it to come to an equilibrium right? Uh, or again, just adding to the perspective and maybe realizing, Hey, the other person is a human being as well. And they have their side of the story. Did I ever get that side of the story? No. Why is that? This is that time. I'm not encouraging you to go back to toxic people. If someone abused you, God forbid, no, I'm not encouraging that. But even in those cases, along with proper therapeutic practices, right? Therapy. Um, you can allow yourself to heal because here's the thing. And this is one of the things that really bothers me uh, about what I hear out there. People will say my soul was crushed. They took a piece of my soul. My soul has never recovered. Your soul can't be broken. Oh, you didn't hear me. Lean in. Your soul can't be broken. I don't care what this YouTuber said or that YouTuber said or this person on Tiki Talk or whatever. Oh, I said it. Oh, I said it. I said it instead of the clock app. Shoot. Now I'm going to get flagged. Oh, well. It's drawn in the trolls anyway. Who cares? <laughs> but your soul cannot be broken. When people say things like that, 
they're talking about this character that they are playing in this time space continuum in this storyline and that character's interpretation of their own soul but in reality your soul is never broken it is of god it is of the divine your soul doesn't get tired either i know we joke we're like well i don't want to reincarnate anymore <laughs> i got you okay but let's get out of this mindset that we are permanently damaged beings and can never come back from this that's not true that's not true we're made of love we go back into love unless along the journey you completely deny yourself that keep that in mind so with this in mind and we want to work with archangel zadkiel if you're going to work with zadkiel on your own and you invite Zadkiel in. I personally like to say of God's purest love and light. You might say of divine light. Put some high frequency words around it. That way, some fourth dimensional being can't come in and pose as this archangel. Okay? So, it, of course, that would be one of the offerings, too, if you wanted to do an in-depth, you know, connection with Archangel Zadkiel or any archangel that's where you would sign up for one of those sessions with me. And essentially, I'd be right there with you, guiding you through the meditation, addressing anything that came up, helping you work through it right there. So it's very efficient. You walk out, you know, within one hour, you know how to get through things that may have previously taken you weeks to figure out in your spiritual practice. So just, you know, that's if you want. Of course, you can do this on your own if that works for you. But, you know, when we get into this... Um, into this, you know, working with this archangel and all of these things start coming up, these low frequency feelings and you hang on to it because you say, no, I have a right to be angry. You are correct when you say they took a piece of my soul. No, it didn't. Okay. No, it didn't. Okay. <laughs> it did not. They did not. Stop, stop, stop. And if you were my client, I would talk to you like this. I'm so sorry, but I would with all the love in my heart because if it's going to take, you know, you know, getting you to wake up a little bit so you're not suffering i'll do that you could be mad at me later that's okay that's okay as long as you got something something positive out of the experience so that's part of the messaging zadkiel's helping us understand instead of allowing ourselves to go into disaster thinking for example realizing the situation i'm in is temporary uh, i will find my way if there's a lull, there's something I'm learning. And no, that's not spiritual sidestepping. See, it's very different. This is how our ego brains try to interpret these messages sometimes. That, you know, if I, if I, if I feel an emotion, if I get angry, then I'm a bad person. I was telling you about the trolls. There was somebody who left a comment and I was like, really and this is just my personality i was like you can't be serious right it's, you know i i love human nature i love studying it and i find some of this stuff really funny and somebody had to comment and this is such a covert narcissist tactic but had to comment is that very nice to speak to one of your viewers that way high manipulation high manipulation like i'm supposed to feel bad i'm supposed to feel guilty you don't even know what's going on right now Watch out for stuff like that, okay? Watch out for, shouldn't you feel this way about that, right? Because those are the people that have, as I've said in previous videos, go back and watch those. These messages are building. That, you know, the darkness, the, the weapon of choice is manipulation and fear, okay? So it comes out in subtle ways that we've been trained to just overlook. And if you look at it, people are like, oh my gosh, you're so petty. Petty is making up stuff about people and going around spreading rumors. That's petty and nasty. Noticing what is very obviously bad behavior and people have been trained to overlook it and calling that out. That's not petty. So if you think so, yeah, because the heat's on, isn't it? It's getting a little close to you. <laughs> people are about to figure you out and you want to make sure you're hiding in the shadows. Ain't our problem. And I'm so serious. I said, ain't, okay? Ain't our problem. It's yours. So working with Zodkiel, 
get out of the mindset that your soul is permanently damaged or can't be restored or if someone if you do feel like someone took a piece of you that's where you do a soul retrieval practice also something you can do with me or any other practitioner that you feel very comfortable with and you feel you can trust or you can do it on your own okay if you feel like you're ready and like you can do that but that's essentially I mean you don't want to go too far into it but it's like sending the energy out that's not yours bringing back what is yours cleansed and blessed out cleansed and blessed in cleansed and blessed sealing off your energy field being in alignment integrating you know there's some steps that go into that but you're not you're not lost you're not lost so working with Zadkiel this is going to help bring some clarity to all of that then Shamuel is in here I love Shamuel Shamuel is like the one who helps you find things guys I've <laughs> I know there are some people out there who are so afraid of angels and archangels because they think like if you actually talk to them that you're doing something bad. And yet these are the same people who will get on social media and say, God told me, God, God brought me a message to bring to you. Did he now? <laughs> I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe, but I don't know. You were just over here telling me I was going to burn in hell because I was talking to an archangel but I guess God chose you to speak to me like what <laughs> I don't know but <laughs> just you know don't don't get too afraid of this of course we want to protect ourselves and make sure we're not working with any sort of darkness but we'll just leave it there but Shamuel is the finding angel if you have lost something I do this all the time I'll say either Shamuel or angels of God's pure self and light where is this thing whatever and I stop and I wait. Don't think about anything. If you think you're going to mess it up, if you think you're going to mess it up, okay, I just wait. And I will feel a natural pull to go to an area. And it might be an area that I've already checked 20 million times, but oh, look, it's right there. Right there. More than anything, if it's something that's like under something else, I, I finally get the nudge to go ahead and lift that up and... You'll see that it's there, right? So Shamuel helps with that, but she is known as the Archangel of Love. She, along with Archangel Raphael, Raphael helps with so many things, but they're associated with uh, love, soulmate connections, learning lessons, learning soul level lessons. If you throw Raguel into the mix, now you are, you know, clearing up past wounds. You are uh, making amends with someone, reconnecting right we have a mercury retrograde coming up so that is quite possible that people are going to come back together and what I would say to that because I feel like a lot of you are going to be asking this question if it was someone who did not harm you if they if they like again god forbid if it was somebody abusive don't go back into that don't open that back up for yourself okay but if this was a disagreement it was something that Again, you didn't have all sides of the story. I know I have a huge habit of like, uh, I, I, I see something, I, 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 it could be this. Therefore, just in case it is that and it could hurt me, I'm going to shut down and run away. Yeah, yeah, I do that. So, you know, this would be like in my case, this would be a wonderful time to transmute that, open my heart and allow the angels to guide me to whoever I need to make amends with or um, just talk it out or lay it down, you know, whatever it is to heal it, right? So Shamuel brings in the capability to help you find love, but hang on, everybody. I mean, they go, you ain't being single for forever. I want to, yes, okay, but hang on. Don't jump ahead, okay? Hang with me here. Come back <laughs> because more than anything, she's about self-love, Oh, I know that just put everything on the back burner then. Okay. Well, <laughs> with the two of them coming in, this is a huge message that we have to get right with ourselves. If you put a lot of pressure on yourselves to be something, to be doing something, to have a certain reputation, to have status, to have money, to, I don't know, some of you out there who are watching, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourselves to get pregnant. And that's not what's going to help. That's not going to help at all. 
that little soul is waiting for, I, how do I want to put that? I mean, it feels like I just opened a can of worms and this is a whole other discussion, but like that little soul is waiting for the energy to be correct, the vessel to be formed, and then it can come on in. Okay. Again, that's a huge, long discussion. I probably shouldn't have mentioned that here, but, <laughs> but yeah, just keep in mind that we, when we put pressure on ourselves, that is taking away and distracting us from sometimes our path, but more than anything, just in general, our peace and our happiness. I mean, that's a given, that's a given. So we're not going to be able to manifest if we're not in the clicked in place. What is the clicked in place? Well, sometimes we refer to that as the flow. People think that that is something that they can just barge their way into. I hope I'm not kicking my tripod. If I've been sitting here talking this entire time and the tripod's like going all over the place, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, it was eyeshadow that refused to blend. It looked even worse under the lamps. Now this. Okay. Maybe nothing. Maybe it was nothing. We hope it was nothing. So get into a place where you have to really release. And this is part of the transmuting. Transmute what you think you want. Transmute what you think you want. And if you're in a self-love kind of place, you're, you're taking it easy on yourself. You're doing self-care. That self-care means if I'm not in a space to handle something, then let me do some self-care so I have some clear thinking and then I will look at the solution to this issue or I will unpack the boxes or whatever your situation may be, okay? <laughs> so from that place, part of why Shamuel's in here as well, Shamuel helps us reach our potential but to reach our potential where we are right now. See, some of us are trying to jump ahead. This is also why your manifestation is not coming to fruition. You're trying to jump to the conclusion. But if you were to do that, you just rob yourself of some very enriching soul experiences and lessons, but also you won't know how to handle the outcome. So let's say there's somebody that you've just had your eye on and you're just so in love with them. Good for you. Love is awesome. Okay. <laughs> love is awesome. But let's say you just want to like run in there and you just run into each other's arms and maybe it's just me, but I would short circuit. I would, I'd be like, nah, like <laughs> danger, danger. I don't know. <laughs> like I need to, I need to feel safe along the way. And to me, that would be too intense. It would be too much. But leading up to it, it could be really, really wonderful. So if you were to, like I say, just run into someone's arms, maybe you missed some of the things that you need to understand about yourself. Maybe that outcome ends up being a letdown and you don't handle it as well because you didn't do the process. You see what I'm saying? So reaching your potential for where you are right now means for, you, you can't jump ahead. You can't, you can't, no shortcuts. Okay, we can't do that. Because if we could do that, I would have done it by now. And I'd be teaching y'all how to do it. All right? But we want to do this correctly. So you don't have to repeat these lessons in another timeline. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so just this is the time. Use this time this week and beyond to really do the reset. Okay? Transmute some of these uh, emotions. Because that's the space you're trying to manifest from. And that's going to make you manifest something that will end up being empty. That will be empty. You've heard me probably say, if you've watched my videos, you know, when we manifest, we have to have it anchored in something. If it was appropriate for me to be a millionaire right now, well, I would hope I, I would have already manifested it. But what am I learning? Right now, I'll show this with you. I'm learning to be resourceful. And it is lovely. It's nice. It's actually brought a lot of comfort. And I've never felt like I was lacking in anything. I've been able to go through my life and cut out some of the waste. And more than anything, I learned that, yeah, I like pretty things. I like nice things. I got a Taurus rising. Deal with it, okay? <laughs> Cancer moon, Scorpio sun. Yeah, I'm that person. I like things to be pretty, cozy, welcoming. And I would, if, if given a lot of money, I'd be that person who's like, let's hire a designer. Let's, you know, I got to have my home. My home is my sanctuary, right? And I would have a designer come in and make it all perfect. 
but what would that really be in the process? A distraction. And what am I distracting from? That's the question we get to. And then there's a lot to unpack from there. Do I really think that if I had a lot of money and I could have this perfectly gorgeous house that that would then make me feel loved? No. No. Would that make me feel abundant? You know, I, w- I probably I would almost feel abundant, abundant, but like I would be so fussy about, I'd be like shoes off at the door, get some slippers. Okay. <laughs> like, that's how you're going at my house. What do you have on your clothes? Is that dog hair? I have lint rollers at the door where you, yeah, I'd be like Martha Stewart. Okay. I would, I would be her. I don't know her, but I'm, I, that's what I've just heard out in the streets that she's like that. I don't know. But I would be worried so much about this home, I wouldn't be able to enjoy it. I am in the process of learning how to relax, to ease into things, to not be so perfectionistic. It's one of the big things that gets me procrastinating. You guys know I have I have many manuscripts. I've written so many books. Where are they? On my computer, right here. <laughs> I'm a good iMac. I mean, um... But I'm so perfectionistic and I'm learning to work around that. Do you see what I'm getting at here? So this is not, just tell me what to do. It's so funny how none of us ever want to be told what to do in day-to-day life. But when it comes to angels, everyone's just kind of like, just tell me what's going to happen. Just tell me the end. Just hurry up. (laughs) And they're actually the one, the last ones you can do that with, right? Because they're the ones guiding you in the experience of being human. If you've ever, think about a vacation, and maybe it's just how my brain works, but if you've ever been on vacation and you're just taking it all, taking it in, taking it in, taking it in, taking it in, and then you start getting tired because maybe you're one of those people, you're just trying to do everything on vacation and you're trying to capture everything in the moment. You're not really taking any time to slow down and appreciate the experience. Often it's when you're not on vacation anymore that you appreciate the vacation the most. And you look back and go, wow, that really was a short amount of time. I shouldn't have gotten upset that it took so long to get my car. Or that we were supposed to have one room, one hotel room, and it ended up being something else. I always think that that's kind of like maybe what happens when we get towards the end of life or when we do our life review on the other side man, I should have enjoyed it more while I was there. But I was always so worried about being perfect, getting as much as I could, fighting with people. Spent a lot of time being guarded. That would be me. (laughs) Or not giving people a chance or um, being too afraid to hear what I needed to hear. This is what these archangels are trying to teach us. And if you sit with this process, it will be the most enriching thing you can do. And it will give you a feeling that no car, house, beautiful furniture, art, I love art as well, art, none of that could even come close to giving you that feeling. That's why I do this work and uh, another type of work. So the question is, are you going to give yourself this this shot? Are you going to allow yourself to explore where your potential is right now? Maybe your potential is getting up and changing that perspective, knowing you don't need to be so afraid, knowing you don't have to avoid, knowing you can handle a conversation, right? The peace, yeah. You're saying this will bring so many people so much peace. And they won't be so crammed up in the ego consciousness that they think the only way out is to fight their way out, to claw their way out, to win. We don't need any of that. So just keep in mind here, it's okay to do this. If you think this is a waste of time, 
or you're judging this or you're just uh, who knows like there's all kinds of negativity kinds of things that could be thrown at this message and you say I'm going to go back to my vision board because it works part of what we're being told today is you need to consider what works for my character in this timeline in this script that I'm living right now P.S. There are other timelines going on. Yes, your soul's split, but not in the twin flame sense necessarily, but it's, it's having different expressions at different times. Fun, right? That's part of the Akashic Records readings that I do for people. But do you want to satisfy the ego, the story, the character, or do you want to be going through a process that will benefit you on a soul level and keep you from having to relearn these lessons. Now, some people don't believe in that, and that's fine. Even if you don't believe in reincarnation, let me tell you this. The times that I have had, I've had a lot of luck. I mean, I was very lucky in getting this house that I'm in right now. The housing market is something. It is something. And the town that I moved into, there was hardly any housing. And this house is old. And the kitchen has cabinets from two different eras. <laughs> I'm not kidding. One side is from like the 60s. The other side is like 80s, 90s, you know. But I love this house. I love this house. It needs a lot of work. But I feel very safe here. I feel like I belong. I don't get any weird energy out of this house. I love it here. I do. So these are things that, you know, if I were to be coming at this from like an ego perspective... Right. I would say, well, this isn't good enough. Right. And I'm robbing myself of the chance to relax and experience peace and happiness. Right. It's this old message that we put forward all the time. It's not a matter of I will be happy when dot, 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 when I get the car, when I get the house, when I get the love partner, when I get the blah, 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 right. When I get pregnant, then I'll be happy until then I won't feel fulfilled. The way we need to manifest, I know you've heard this, but it bears repeating that we will manifest what is right for us in our soul's contract at this time through a place of peace, through love, through the heart, through the heart. That is where we can anchor things in. Okay. So it's not bad to want to manifest money, you know, I don't know, the house, whatever. It's, it's okay to do that. Just make sure you're not missing the point as you're doing that. And unfortunately, people who get really just stuck in that sort of, um, uh, quite frankly, the vapid definition of the law of attraction, really missing the point half the time. Many of those people who have backed up that theory, yes, they've manifested and they've lost it. Yeah, and then they manifested it again and then they lost it. And so they can go, hey, look, no, I've proven it works. But why isn't it sticking? Who the heck wants to <laughs> keep rebuilding their life because it keeps? And I'm a Scorpio. I'm a stellium Scorpio. All I do is destruct and construct and build it back up and reinvent and all that. And I'm tired. Okay. And I'm built for it. So who wants to keep doing that? This is what they're trying to get us to understand. More than anything, there's a message coming through now. It's okay if you don't get what you wanted. You're not a failure. It's okay if you need to stop and reevaluate and take a different approach. It's okay and recommended that you stop and give your heart a break. Because your heart space is trying to talk to you. It's trying to bring you a message. Your angels are bringing you messages. And if you've ever noticed, that's when we tend to manifest things and we had no idea that that's what we were doing. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to give a cautionary tale. If you feel like I've listened to enough of this, this is the longest video of my life. <laughs> I understand. I totally understand if you need to take your leave. That's cool. But um, I was in a corporate job. This was years ago. Years ago. And I, I had a coworker who was interested in the law of attraction. Now, I had always had, I was that weird kid. I could see dead people. I was very much that kid, Okay. I had to hide it. You know the story. But these terms, the things that had become hot seller type 
tags, right? Um, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know that people had articulated it in these terms. So this coworker is talking to me about the law of attraction and she's so into this and, you know, she says you should, cause I had just come out of this like really awful relationship. It was abusive. It was terrible. It was abusive. And he was a oh, malignant narcissist. It was, it was a lot. And I was trying to recover from that. Now, if you've ever had a breakup like that, or you've experienced narcissistic abuse, you know, that's a process to come out of that and to heal. But that's where I was. But this coworker was like, ah, oh, the best way to get over somebody is to get someone new. <laughs> right? So I was like, all right. And she's telling me about the law of attraction and how you're supposed to, the technique that she told me was to sit down and write out all of the traits that I would want in a husband. Oh, she got me married already. Okay. But I guess in a husband. And what was interesting was I tried it and... I'm a very creative, artistic kind of person, which is funny that I'm running a business because that, I mean, I do it, but that's not like, that's not my favorite part of it. You know, marketing, not my favorite part of it, right? But like, you got to do it, right? So anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I would have always thought from the ego mind that I would want someone who's also creative because they'll get me, right? But I went against what she was telling me about this approach. I went against it. And for the most part, no, I still mess this up. It's a cautionary tale. Okay. It's a do not as I do kind of story. So I started out in my mind and I kind of bounced between head and heart, not conscious that I was doing this. I only kind of realized this when I was looking back that that's in fact what I was doing. So I started thinking about it. I was like, no, I want somebody who, uh, well, I said a businessman, I said a businessman, but what does a businessman represent to me? A businessman represents stability, intelligence, savvy, right? And I'm over here just like writing my little books and then sticking them in a drawer where nobody sees them. And then I, you know, trying to get a job to (laughs) pay my rent, you know? So it wasn't like a gold digger kind of scenario. Like, oh, I want a rich man. No, it was more, I don't have, I don't have those experiences. And I gravitate towards somebody who feels safe and stable, right? You can balance me out. Uh, and hopefully I would balance them out too. So I'm right in business, man. Um, I wanted someone who was of my same generation, but maybe a little bit older. I liked older guys, not too much older. Like, again, we're still in the same generation. Maybe he's at the higher end of it in, in age and I'm kind of at the lower end of it. And I also said that I did not want somebody... <laughs> Oh God, you guys, the stuff I did. Um, I didn't want an American. If you can't tell by how I speak, I'm American. Okay. Now that was weird. Like, what does it matter? What does it matter if it's American or not American? But there was something in my heart that was like, I kind of wanted someone who could show me the world because I'm a little, I mean, I've done it and I've done it plenty of times, but to have somebody who comes from a different background, a different culture and share that culture with me. I just thought that was so beautiful and what a wonderful bonding opportunity. And I put some other things in there. Of course, I wanted him to be hot, um, (laughs) tall. I'm only five foot two. I know some of you tall girls are out there going to be like, date in your height range, ma'am. But I mean, you know, to me, tall is five, six. I mean, (laughs) because you're still taller than me. It's fine. So I write all these traits down. Then something in my mind, catastrophic happens. There's this big shift going on. I have no idea what the heck is going on. And this coworker, again, there's, this was a whole debacle, but got into an argument with this coworker because she had been hiding some stuff from me. News at 11 on that one, or maybe I shouldn't share that. I don't know on the, on the internet, but anyway, she starts pulling up. Someone is leaving the company. Our boss was going to leave the company. Somebody else is coming in and she pulls up this whole website of all the candidates. Now this ticked me off because this had been hidden from me that this was even happening. And here they've been at this because this is, this is a (laughs) well-organized little thing they got going on here. And she's scrolling through, scrolling through, scrolling through. And she really makes a point to show me this one man. And he's everything that was on that list. Absolutely everything. And I flipped out. I flipped out. Now, there were so many other things going on at that time. 
and there were rumors that this person was going to be hired. Okay, now what does this have to do with a manifestation story? I created this man with my mind. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure he existed before I, I dreamed him into being. But the thing was, is I ended up pulling in someone that met all that criteria. But there were other things that I didn't think to mention, right? And I ended up, if you've ever watched the, the movie Weird Science, you know, the kids are trying to create, they're trying to create a woman, right? And they mess it up so many times. So yeah, it was weird. This person was everything on my list, but because I wasn't healed, I was not in touch with my heart. I didn't put down the most important things, right? Being available for me, being emotionally there for me, truly being safe, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Again, I could go on and on, but the point is, is that I missed the deeper stuff because I was coming from, well, I was trying to bounce back and forth between the heart and the mind. So that's how I ended up discovering what I actually wanted. But then somewhere I lost the thread. I lost that. And, um, it was probably that coworker. We can blame her. She was like that. You know, we, we can blame her. Sure. We'll scapegoat somebody. <laughs> Sorry. I, I wouldn't encourage that normally, but this round it fits. Okay. So anyway, the point is, is that I didn't work through not feeling safe. Right. And I was so focused on someone who could protect me. And a lot of people wouldn't get that from me. I think a lot of people look at me and say, oh, you're so independent. You know, I, I'm independent because I've had to be. I'm guarded because I've had to be. Them's the breaks. That's, <laughs> that's how it's played out. But again, uh, it wasn't the, the stable sense of safety that I thought it would be. And um, it wasn't the right time. The timing was off. And that's another thing with our manifestations. The timing has to be correct. I was in no shape to draw a love partner into my life. I, I still saw everybody as a narcissist. I was still so deeply hurt by that and depleted that I didn't trust anything. Now think about it. Think about if something had, if there, like all the pieces were there and something had happened and I had come together with this person. I would have been bringing all of that to the table, right? So thank God I'm a cut and run kind of gal because I think I spared them from from all of my wounding, right? I'm not that person now, obviously, but you know, at the time we think we know what we want and we push on that. And yeah, we can dip into the heart like I was doing in this and you have some little discoveries about what you actually want. But ultimately it was a vision board experience where I just sort of from the mind laid it down. And it ended up being weird science. <laughs> By the way, weird science, it's, it's like from the 80s. I went back, this was like a couple years ago, went back to watch it. They had cut out that entire, it was, I think it was, I don't know, it was on the streaming or something. They had cut out the entire scene of all the trials and errors of the women they were trying to create. So maybe my reference won't make sense to you if you watch that movie. They cut that all out. But um, in the original version, or maybe that's my own Mandela effect. I mean, maybe. But the version I remember, they just kept trying and like the, the women were like, Ugh, like one woman was only half a woman. Like they, they didn't build all of her. Like it was a whole thing. But anyway, that's my point in manifesting. That's my cautionary tale. And we also want to be careful with this because of the energy we put out there and we could be toying with someone. So again, you could put all the energy out there. Like I'm ready for someone. No, not you. <laughs> like I'm ready for a brand new job. Like not that one. I don't want to do that. Right. So you're, you're putting the call out. Make sure it's crystal clear what you're putting out there and make sure you're ready to receive. Make sure you are asking for things that feel right in your heart space. I've talked this to death. I've talked this right into the ground. So we'll leave it there. Leave your comments down below. Again, if you want to work with me, angelsouls444.com for a standard reading, or you can email me 
at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. If you want to do a live one-on-one session for a reading, a course, connecting with a certain archangel, let me know what you think about this. Let me know. All right, we'll leave it there. I love you guys. Take care.